Welcome back to Rapid Lodash. In our first video, we'll look at some of the functions the Lodash provides for controlling function execution, the throttle, debounce, and delay operations. In our previous section, we talked about collections and how to retrieve data from them. We applied filtering and categorizing functions to the data to gain insights into our data sets. We learned how to pull randomized data from collections and provide more dynamic behavior in our applications. Finally, we applied map and reduce functions to collections to transform our data. In this section, we'll look at controlling the flow within our programs. We'll use Lodash to help us organize and control timing for functions we use in our JavaScript programs by leveraging methods like throttle, delay, and debounce. We'll look at how we can chain functions together to make our programs more readable. Finally, we'll learn how to bind variables for more flexible code. To get started, we'll open up our node repl environment with the node command. We'll also need to load lodash with the require command. We'll start with our dinosaur theme park example. Let's create a collection of dinosaurs to populate the park with. So let's say we have a function that feeds all of our dinosaurs. We'll just use Lodash's for each function to apply a feeding function to every dino in the collection. This function works fine. It feeds the dinosaurs. However, it has one potential flaw. It feeds the dinosaurs every time it is called. We really need to make sure our animals aren't overfed. Feeding should be no less than six hours apart. We need to throttle the function. Lodash's throttle function does exactly this. We'll pass in a function and the number of milliseconds, and it returns a function that will execute at most once every period covered by the number of milliseconds specified. In this case, six hours. Let's try to run this function more than one time in six hours. We'll use JavaScript's set timeout to schedule feedings for one and two seconds in the future. We can see from the output that the function only executes once. We also have access to a related function called debounce, which helps with the cases where users might accidentally request a function to execute multiple times. Let's imagine we have a feed button in our control system and a JavaScript function to handle the button press. Users will often double tap a button. We'll handle this using debounce. It ensures that the function is called only once x milliseconds after its last call. We'll give debounce a function and a wait time. Now, this will wait 100 milliseconds after the button is pressed before executing, preventing the possibility of a double tap. Finally, let's look at one more method of flow control, time delays. Let's make a control to turn off the lights in our park. We may want a little bit of delay to allow everyone to get out before the lights turn off. The delay function takes a function and executes it after a wait time in milliseconds specified by the second argument. It is almost identical to JavaScript's set timeout construct. In fact, it even returns a timer ID that can be canceled with clear timeout. Easy, right? We've successfully taken our dinosaur park and created a function to feed the dinosaurs with a rate limit for safety. We've also created a button control using debounce to avoid double tap problems. Finally, we created a time delayed function to introduce a delay without using loops or sleep commands. Now you should be able to control flow within your application and delay execution as needed. In our next video, We'll use Lodash chain functions to make easy to maintain programs.